thing on you that, um, you know, like growing your, I, I just, I love that last panel. I mean, um, scaling your business is one of the hardest things um, that you could do. And these women yeah. have such great, they gave such great advice. Um, and, you know, from, from being, doing it themselves, what better way can you get, um, you know, get advice on that. So anyway, it is my pleasure to introduce to you one of our valued sponsors of the Modern Day Boss Summit, Gordon and Breeze. Uh, Scully and Mansukani. Mansukani. I'm going to say the whole name. I'm just going to call them Gordon and Reese for simplicity. Um, they're a national law firm servicing the needs of businesses, small and large, with offices in all 50 states. And founding and managing partner of their New York City office, Mercedes Colwyn, is joining us today, and she will be providing some knowledgeable tidbits on best practices in hiring and returning employees to workplace in the aftermath of COVID. Take it away, Mercedes. Wendy, thank you so much. It's such a privilege to be here. Thank you for this great opportunity. And hi to all of you who are attending today. Uh, it's really going to be very exciting for businesses. We've been talking to businesses now for the last couple of months because it looks like the fall of 2021 is really when a lot of the businesses are coming back into the workplace, bringing the workforce back. So there are lots of moving parts and I'm glad to walk through just the highlights of what to do. The very first thing that you're gonna be required under the law is to make sure that your workplace is safe. So we've heard a lot of guidance from the CDC, which is all great news for those of us who are out and about going outside. Certainly if you're fully vaccinated, you don't have to wear a mask. So that's great news for a lot of folks out there. But it's a little different for employers because that is a federal guideline. You need to adhere to what the Department of Health in the various jurisdictions that you have businesses say. So a lot of these the employers, although they made their employees outside, may be able to go maskless. Inside, it's a very different story. So you probably will have to adhere to what the Department of Health has said, which is the social distancing, the masking, the ensure that there's lots of sanitizer everywhere, postings. That's absolutely critical and absolutely required under the law. So all the employers who are very excited about bringing their workplace back into some semblance of normality, come the fall, start preparations now because it definitely takes a few months to get that all in place. I can speak to you from personal knowledge. We opened up our offices back in just on a voluntary basis, but we opened it back up in July of 2020. It took a few months to get to that point. So start preparing now. That's a great way to start. Secondly, it's who do you bring back? There's going to be rehires, callbacks. There may be individuals that are working full time at home. Maybe there was a hybrid schedule in place since the pandemic. Maybe individuals were in the workplace to begin with. But what those individuals that haven't been back in the workplace, there has to be some sort of analysis as to where the, those individuals will be brought back. So if you're doing rehires and callbacks, don't do what a lot of businesses do and say, well, we have some fiscal needs that are going to, we're going to have to address. Some of those fiscal needs means that we're going to have to do cutbacks. We're not going to be able to rehire and bring back some of our workforce. Well, if you're going to do that, and you have to do some, some sort of financial constraints with respect to bringing individuals back. Make sure you do an analysis to ensure that you're not doing it in a way that actually impacts individuals that are older, the more seasoned employees, the ones that are higher salaried individuals, you're going to have to make sure that when you do, if you do have to do some constrict, some financial contraction of your workforce, that it's done in a way that there isn't some sort of disparate impact to the workforce. So to make sure there's a cross section of employees that may be impacted, not just the more seasoned employees that are salaried, higher salary. If you choose to bring back your employees on a more permanent basis, all in, as opposed to hybrid, what we told our, our clients is, honestly, hybrid's a better way to go. A lot of individuals, first of all, we're all working from home. Uh, we have a hybrid in place in our offices. We're, we're suggesting to our clients to do hybrid because one, you'll have, you'll be able to retain your best team if you start to make the, the mandatory for everyone to come back in the office five days a week, you may have a lot of requests for accommodations. You may have individuals that simply say, we can't come back, may look for other opportunities, may depart from your employment. 
from from your employment and your place of business. So be very careful about making those decisions. But it's obviously it is something to be determined by the employer making those decisions. I will say that before the pandemic, employers could say, well, look, we're, we're looking at this situation. We can't have individuals work from home. It, it became becomes just too untenable for the business. That's just not the way anymore. If, if you're if employers are looking at this and saying, we're not going to be able to accommodate individuals, we're going to have to require them to work from home. Well, working from home and saying that to a court, to a trier of fact or to, to a judge that it's just too much of a hardship on the on the business, unless you're in a service industry where you're actually interfacing with clients, making an argument that it's too much of an undue hardship for individuals to be accommodated to work from home on a permanent basis or a semi-permanent basis or a hybrid basis, it's going to be something that's going to be scrutinized. And frankly, it's going to be a hard argument to make and make a viable one if ever, if challenged by an employee in the future. So we've been suggesting to employers, make it hybrid. You'll have a much happier workforce. If you can do it hybrid, great. If you can't, then obviously it can't be, but just be aware that there might be a challenge to that in the future. So you've got your workplace back. You are you are complying with all the departments of health around the country. You're absolutely fine. Now some of the things that need to be addressed is how do you, if you have a, a hybrid, how do you make sure that your corporate culture is effective to individuals within the workplace? How do you communicate that? How do you connect with your employees if they're not interfacing with one another one-on-one on, one, on, on a, on a every day. Well, you do it by doing what we're doing here, which is amazing. I mean, Wendy, Wendy and I talk about this all the time. We have great conversations. We connect wonderfully. We're able to connect with individuals around the country and around the globe for those who attend from around the globe. It's, it's amazing what Zoom has done. So all of that can be used. These are great, useful tools. Use those Zoom meetings. Use those meeting platforms. Use meeting, team meetings. All of those platforms are so effective to ensure that your corporate culture remains intact and robust. And lastly, be flexible. You know, if anything, what the pandemic has shown all of us, we need to be flexible. We need to be open-minded. The way we did our business is entirely different in the past. And frankly, we're still learning day by day what the business opportunities and what the business is really going to look like in the new normal. We haven't really entered the new normal yet. We're sort of figuring things out. But come the fall, when everyone pretty much comes back to what their new normal is, whether it's a hybrid or it's full-time back in the office, we'll have to just remain flexible and continue to work really hard to make sure those connections stay in place. Wow, that was amazing. So 10, 10 minutes and I, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. <laughs> You're too nice. I love you, Wendy. You know, you are such a rock star. When you call me to participate in this organization, I couldn't have been happier. So uh, well, I'm we are so, incredibly, so incredibly, incredibly lucky to have you. And, um, you know, you're my spirit horse. So um, <laughs> I, uh, I thank you so much for all of your great advice. And we look forward to having you on Boss Talks. I think that this topic definitely is, this is not the end point. We will be um, exploring that even further. So um, become a member of Boss Talks and you will see more of Mercedes for sure. Um, Mercedes, how can we find uh, Gordon and Reese? We are, we have 70 offices around, actually our 70th offices in Korea. Our 69 offices are nationwide. Uh, you can find me in our New York City office. Uh, at, you can certainly Google me, Mercedes Colwyn. I'm here. And our offices, we service the entire country. We have 69 offices. I'm basically an office in every state. So any needs anyone has, uh, we are corporate litigators. We do everything from whether it's something to do with your business, any of the commercial employment or anything in between. So we're happy to help and, and we're privileged to serve anyone that's part of this organization. Uh, and I have to say, I've um, I've worked with Mercedes before and um, I've, I've also been an employment lawyer and she is amazing and she's extremely, extremely talented. So best thing you could do is to reach out to her. Um, you can also, uh, in general, find more information on the firm at uh, grsm.com. 
and I think we're uh, we're 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 on we're we're on deck for the for uh, the next um, segment. So Wonderful. thank you well, so much, Mercedes. We appreciate it. Uh, thank you. Have a great one. Bye, everyone.